Even in a normal heart, the inherent automaticity of cardiac cells occasionally results in tissue outside the SA node discharging and depolarizing the organ. This is the mechanism generating ectopic beats, a phenomenon experienced by almost every person at some point. In the vast majority of cases, this is of no clinical significance whatsoever. However, as you will see, in some individuals, ectopics play a key role in triggering life-threatening arrhythmias. Also, principles learned from the analysis of ectopics can be applied to help with arrhythmia diagnosis. This is a normal heart, and it is in sinus rhythm. At this point, a region of the atrium has developed enhanced automaticity and has discharged a depolarizing current. Initially, it triggers atrial depolarization. The wave is transmitted by the AV node into the ventricular conducting system, triggering ventricular depolarization. This is a premature atrial ectopic, or as it is frequently referred to, a premature atrial contraction. On the ECG, the premature atrial contraction occurs earlier than the next predicted sinus beat. Also, and very importantly, you will appreciate that as the ectopic discharge originates in the atrium, it must be transmitted into the ventricles by the AV node, and consequently into the ventricular conducting system. Therefore, as the wave is transmitted at normal speed around the chambers by the conducting system, the QRS complex associated with an atrial ectopic is of normal duration, that is, less than three small squares in width. In fact, the depolarization wave from a focus situated anywhere above the physiological bifurcation of the bundle of Hiss will enter both branches of the intraventricular conducting system. Consequently, the QRS complex associated with discharge from a focus situated anywhere in this region will be of normal duration. Now, here's a different situation. In this case, the site of increased automaticity generating the ectopic beat is located in the ventricle. The key point to note here is that the current is transmitted at least in part outside the ventricular conducting system. Depolarization moves through myocardium four to eight times more slowly than through conducting tissue. So the characteristic of a ventricular ectopic is that the QRS complex is prolonged in duration, resulting in a broad QRS complex greater than three small squares on the ECG readout. Note also that the pattern of spread of depolarization is highly abnormal, producing a complex of bizarre shape. As the sequence of depolarization is deranged, the pattern of repolarization is also abnormal, manifesting as a lack of concordance between the ectopic QRS complex and the associated T wave. Looking at both of these rhythm strips, you will notice that the atrial and ventricular ectopic are followed by a pause before the next sinus discharge. There are, however, important differences between the nature of this pause in the case of atrial and ventricular ectopics. Understanding these differences will help us when dealing with more complex situations in section 5. In the case of ventricular ectopics, while retrograde transmission of depolarization into the atria via the AV node can occur on occasion, it is an unusual event. A ventricular ectopic, therefore, is not usually associated with retrograde depolarization of the structures of the atria, including the SA node. The SA node continues to discharge at its own inherent rate oblivious to events below the AV node. As the sinus node continues to discharge at its own regular rate, the next P wave following the ectopic will occur at a predictable time point. In addition, 
the heart rate following the ventricular ectopic is the same as that preceding it. A pause with these characteristics following an ectopic is termed a compensatory pause. A compensatory pause indicates that the ectopic has had no effect on the SA node. In the example shown here, the morphology of the premature ectopic is consistent with an origin in the ventricles. We would predict that it will have had no effect on the sinus node. Before the ectopic, there were approximately four large squares between P waves. We would therefore expect the next sinus discharge to occur at this point. Indeed it did. However, note that it was not transmitted into the ventricles as it arrived at the junctional region at a time when the conducting system was still refractory to transmission. Also, in this particular example, as the sinus discharge occurred during ventricular repolarization, it is buried within the T wave associated with the ectopic and is not visible on the ECG readout. We would still predict that the next sinus discharge would occur at this point, a further four squares on. This is indeed the case. So the P wave following the ectopic occurs at a predictable point on the readout, which is a simple multiple of the preceding P wave interval. Also note that with four squares between all subsequent R waves, the heart rate is the same as that preceding the ectopic. As expected, this is a compensatory pause and supports the conclusion that this ectopic originated in the ventricles. In contrast to ventricular ectopics, discharge from an atrial ectopic will usually result in depolarization of the cells of the SA node, temporarily suppressing their discharge. The SA node recovers its function after a pause of variable duration. As the duration of recovery is variable, the timing of the next P wave is not predictable. The next sinus discharge does not occur at a simple multiple of the P to P wave interval preceding the ectopic. Premature depolarization of the SA node also has a broader effect on its function and may reset its inherent rate of spontaneous depolarization, leading to a different heart rate, either faster or slower, following the ectopic. A pause with these characteristics is termed a non-compensatory pause. Before we summarize the material contained in this video, there are a number of other features of the atrial ectopic worth noting at this point. Firstly, in this particular example, the ectopic discharge has originated low in the atrial cavity, and the bulk of atrial depolarization is spreading upwards. The ectopic P wave is therefore negative in the inferior leads, illustrated here in the rhythm strip lead 2, reflecting an abnormal P wave axis. You may also have noticed that compared to the normal sinus beat, the PR interval is shortened in the ectopic. This reflects the fact that in this particular case, atrial depolarization has arisen from a focus closer to the AV node than the sinoatrial node. The time taken to reach the AV node is therefore reduced, and the PR interval associated with the ectopic is shortened accordingly. You will see shortly that precisely this type of analysis can help us determine the site of origin of arrhythmias. So, premature ectopic beats can originate from sites of enhanced automaticity in the atria or ventricles. Both occur early that is, before the next expected sinus beat. Atrial ectopics are transmitted into both branches of the ventricular conducting system and therefore are associated with a normal QRS complex. 
atrial ectopics are usually associated with a non-compensatory pause. In contrast, ventricular ectopics are generated in the ventricular wall or a component of the conducting system and must travel at least in part through the slower conducting ventricular muscle. Consequently, they are associated with broad QRS complexes and deranged repolarization results in a non-concordant T wave. In addition, ventricular ectopics are usually followed by a compensatory pause.